Hello, this is Dr. Eric Bricker and thank you for watching A Healthcare Z. Today's topic is Google starts a reinsurance company. That's right, Google's getting into the uh, stop loss reinsurance business. Now, the company's going to be called Coefficient. It is going to be part of the Google Healthcare subsidiary Verily and Coefficient is going to be partially owned and it's going to be in partnership with Swiss Re one of the largest stop loss reinsurance companies in the world and they do a bunch of different types of stop loss but healthcare and health insurance stop loss is one of the things they do as well now in order for coefficient to enter the market they're going to have to offer some sort of superior value proposition in terms of its stop loss product and all insurance products stop loss included have three parts and i call them the three p's they are the premium what you have to pay and what you pay when you're buying stop loss insurance is something called specific stop loss and aggregate stop loss now there is a fantastic set of videos from spencer smith it's called stop loss with spencer i will leave a link in the show notes if you want to learn more about specific and aggregate stop loss please watch his videos i have no connection to him but i watch his videos they are fantastic now just understand that the premium for specific stop loss is much greater than the premium for the aggregate stop loss and this is for specific individuals that's why it's called specific okay now payout is okay well how much is the insurance company going to pay out and that's determined by the deductible so obviously the lower the deductible the more the insurance company has to pay out and the higher the deductible the less the insurance company has to pay out so your typical specific uh, deductible is about $100,000 per person per year. So in other words, the employer has to pay the first $100,000 of claims for that person for that year. And then if there, if there are claims in excess of $100,000, then the reinsurance stop loss company, they pay the rest. Now, the last part is the fine print. And that, there are many different parts of fine print, but the one specific part of fine print that I'm going to talk about today is lasering where the stop loss reinsurance company will identify specific individuals that are of particularly high risk and are going to incur, or they think they're going to incur, excessively high claims. And they say, hey, for you, Joe or Mary, we're going to give you an individual deductible that's actually higher than the 100000 We might make it $250,000. And this is typically because that person has a major cancer diagnosis or they are, they're on dialysis, and the reinsurance company thinks that they're just going to incur much higher claims, and so therefore they're putting greater uh, risk for those claims back on the employer. So lasering is bad for the employer. Lasers sound cool, but they are not good for employers. Okay, now, typically in order to enter a new market, any company has to have a 10x better value proposition. Okay, well how in the world are Google and Coefficient gonna have a 10x better value proposition in regards to the uh, three Ps? Okay, so they say, they say in the press release that they're going to have superior underwriting through a unique data-driven approach. Okay, well what does that mean in terms of the three Ps? They might be able to offer specific premiums that are lower than the current competition because of their superior underwriting or they might be able to offer lower deductibles, a $75,000 or a $50,000 deductible as opposed to the $100,000 and they'll beat the competition there. Or they'll say, hey look, we don't have to laser these people out that the competition is lasering. And the employer will say, oh that's great, I'd rather go with coefficient than my existing reinsurance carrier. So that's how superior underwriting would help them in regards to the three Ps. And then interestingly, they're also going to have, or they, they say they're going to have, improved risk management, specifically meaning for those high cost claimants, they're gonna have better member interventions, right? So if the person has cancer, or if the person is on dialysis, then Coefficient is going to be able to do things with those individuals to decrease their claims costs. Again, that's what they're claiming. You know, that remains to be seen. And again, if they're able to successfully do that, they could lower the premiums, they could lower deductibles, and they could do things like taking out lasering. Now, why in the world is Google partnering with Swiss Re? Okay, one, this is a business to business sale. Historically, Google has not done business to business sales. They don't want to get into the business to business space. It's a mess, okay? Business to business sales is, um, I don't even get me started. Okay, so what is it? Swiss Re, what does it give? It gives them market access. So in terms of actually 
facilitating the sales process, they're going to rely on Swiss Re for that, for their name and their expertise, their existing install base. So, I mean, that's a very smart move on Google's part because they know that they don't have expertise in entering the reinsurance market. They don't have the relationships, but Swiss Re certainly does. Okay, now, what I have here is a graph depicting how coefficient would bring value and frankly be a better option potentially in the reinsurance stop loss space. So what you have here on the y-axis is the premium, let's say, and what you have here on the x-axis is the risk. And so this solid line here is like what we'll consider like the ideal premium in regards to risk. So in other words, if it's low risk, it's low premium. And then as the risk goes up, the premium goes up. And then what I've drawn here in the dotted line is what potentially the current stop loss marketplace offers. In other words, they're charging premium in excess of what the risk is. And by the way, I'm in, in that ideal line, I'm also including like reasonable profit margin in there, okay? So the point is, is that because the current stop loss carriers do not have superior underwriting skills, or strategies, data, et cetera, et cetera. And because they don't have superior risk mitigation member inter uh, intervention strategies, then coefficient thinks they're gonna beat them on that. And so they're gonna be able to go in and say, okay, we're gonna go in and we're gonna be able to say, aha, for this amount of risk, we'll be actually be able to only charge um, the premium that's on the solid line as opposed to what the existing reinsurance carrier is charging on the dotted line, okay? And that's how they would essentially steal business away from the incumbents, all right? So that remains to be seen. There's one final very important point I want to address. I said at the beginning, or maybe I didn't say at the beginning, that the reinsurance market, according to the CNBC article, is a $20 billion market. Let's just say that Coefficient knocks it out of the park, and over the course of a certain number of years, they become the 800-pound gorilla in the health insurance uh, stop-loss space in America. And let's say they capture 40% market share across that $20 billion. Well, that's $8 billion. Now, Google's revenue, or Alphabet's revenue, is $162 billion a year. So if they get that 40% stop loss so market share and they're pulling in an extra $8 billion a year, then, you know, whoop to do They just increased their uh, overall Google Alphabet revenue by 5%. So that begs the question, why is Google even bothering? Like, this hardly moves the needle. Right? Again, this is like ideal scenario with Google knocking it out of the park in the stop loss space. So why in the world would they even go here? If from a revenue perspective, it's not really of that much consequence. And I think the answer to that is, in my opinion, is that the stop loss here, the reinsurance, is only the start of a larger health insurance strategy. Because you can apply this same curve here in terms of not pricing risk very well and Google being able to price that risk better across fully insured groups, across a variety of other insurance products, and it's there that the market is much bigger than 20 billion and Google could really start making some headway in terms of expanding its overall company revenue. So that's the point I wanted to make today. Thank you for watching A Healthcare Z.